Praise the Lord. Today we continue talking about the three M's of money. We said the three M's of money is making money, managing money, and multiplying money. Those three M's are what is necessary for you to move from where you are right now to the realm of wealth or to the realm where, you know, the billionaires and the millionaires sit. You have to know how to make the money first. You have to know how to manage the money when it comes. You have to know how to multiply it. So today we are talking about managing money. There are three things about managing money that you must always know. Number one is planning. You are supposed to plan how you will increase. You are supposed to plan the work of your hands. You are supposed to plan how you will spend your money. You should not just receive money and, and spend it anyhow. Number two is, the, is frugality. Frugality is a word that, you know, has gotten a bad rap because people think that frugality means being cheap. It's not the same. Frugality actually means making sure that nothing goes to waste. It's lack of wastage. So that is also very important. And thirdly is stewardship. You know, the Bible says that it is required of a steward that he be found faithful. So you have to be a good steward of the money that God has given you. Let's begin by talking about planning. Proverbs 16 verse 3. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do. And your plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Most people make plans and they don't involve God. Or they make plans and then, you know, they kind of just tell God, you know, um, here is what I'm planning to do. Please endorse it and let's move forward. But the truth is you're supposed to make your plans with God. You know, you're supposed to be planning for your future prayerfully with God. When you sit down to plan your money, do it prayerfully with God. Let, you know, let God have a say in what you're planning. Let God have a say as you put together your business plan for the future, as you put together your revenue strategies and your revenue plans, and as you are, you know, putting together your sales plans to bring in the wealth for your business. You have to include God. As you are including God in your planning, that is when you are able now to have your plan succeed because this is a joint venture. You know, your life is a, is a joint venture with God. Your work is a joint venture with God. You want to be able to include him so that as you are putting down the dreams, he is able to bring his ability. You see, you can have the dream, you can, you know, you can have the dream, but the ability to bring it to pass is something else. The reason why we make limitless dreams, you know, we make limitless goals, we set our goals high, we focus on making sure that we are dreaming big and we are big thinkers, is not because we have our own ability. The Bible says that the strength of money is small, so our own ability will probably not cut it. But we serve a God who is limitless. We serve a God who is omnipotent. You know, his power is great. His ability to bring it to pass is great. His ability to help you and to take you into a place that you never in your own, you know, strength could go in is great. So we partner with God and we commit to the Lord everything we are doing, even our planning. As we are planning, we are planning with God. And as we do so then, we see the Lord bringing to pass everything that we had, we had, um, we have been thinking about. That is something that we must embrace, especially this coming year. We must embrace the idea in this year. We must embrace the idea of walking with God and partnering with God and understanding in, in Deuteronomy 11, he says that the land that God is bringing you into, that land is a land that God cares for. His eye is on it from the beginning of the year to the end. So God is interested in the work of your hands. God is interested in your business. God is interested in your work. He wants to see. He wants to come there and help you. He, his eye is on you. The Bible says, I will guide you with my eye upon you. So as he's guiding you with his eye, even his eye is also on the work of your hands because God is interested in your success. He wants to bring you into prosperity and you must believe that. Look at Psalm 20, verse 4. It says, may he give you the desire of your heart and may he make all your plans succeed. You can plan, but the one who will bring it to succeed is God. You can plan. You can set up all your amazing plans. <coughs> Excuse me. You can put together amazing plans, but you are not able to bring them to pass in your own, in your own energy, in your own strength. So you need God to bring your plans to pass. You must work with God in your planning. Without that, things will get tricky. 
The other thing is frugality. In John 6, 12, Jesus has just multiplied the bread and the fish. People have eaten and still, you know, God provides in excess. God will never just provide what you need, like exactly what you need. He provides in excess. He's a God of overflow. He's a God of abundance. So what he needs for you to do is to manage that overflow and manage that abundance. So when Jesus provided the, the meat, you know, the fish and the, and the bread, he did not just provide enough for everybody to eat. They ate and there were 12 baskets left over. That is what the Bible says. They ate and there were 12 baskets left over. And when those baskets that were left over, he said, collect those fragments. Collect those fragments. Let nothing go to waste. That is the heart of God. And that is what frugality is. Frugality is you being comfortable. God will make sure you're comfortable. God will make sure your needs are met. But you have to manage the excess. Whatever it is that is over and above your own needs has to be properly managed. Otherwise, when God sees wastefulness, it does not bring him glory. So we are not going to be wasteful. That's part of managing wealth. We are going to know how to steward wealth. We are going to know how to steward overflow. We are going to know how to steward abundance by walking in frugality. The other one is stewardship. Luke 16, 11 talks about stewardship. And you know... What it actually says is, if you cannot be trusted with unrighteous mammon, if you cannot be trusted to steward finances, who will trust you with the true riches? You know, 16, 11, here it is. It says, <clears throat> let's start at verse 10, Luke 16 from 10 and 11. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? You know, so worldly wealth is actually a test to see if you are trustworthy, to see if you can be trusted. You have to be a good steward. And the thing with being a steward is that a steward is actually a household manager. It is a manager of a household. And primarily the work of a steward is to distribute resources, to distribute food to the other servants in their time, when it, at the proper time. So a steward was expected that whatever the needs were for each person in that household, he would be the one to make sure that everything is in place. So if you cannot be trusted to distribute to others, you should be thinking in terms of giving, you know, how can you be trusted with other things, with true riches? So stewardship covers the arm of giving. You must be a giver. And then it also covers saving and investing, which comes under multiplication. But that is still stewardship of money. So the three things you have to be thinking about in terms of managing money when we're talking about the three M's is planning. Don't use money without a plan. You have to have a plan. Two, stewardship. Three, frugality. Be frugal. Know how to, to manage the overflow. Know how to manage the excess. Because if you don't know how to manage the excess, you will be wasteful. And being wasteful is actually counterproductive in the kingdom of God. So that is the second M of money. We are talking about the three M's. The first one is making money. The second one is managing money. And that is what we have talked about. And the third one, which we are about to talk about, is multiplying money. So I'll see you here next time when we talk about the third M of multiplying money. God bless you. God keep you. You are rich in the Lord. In Jesus name, I pray for you today that you will increase in all things. Amen.